Jack Smith better watch his back because my man Clarence Thomas is all over him. Chit, hidden in the Trump versus USA immunity claim, Clarence Tom Thomas shots fired way off topic against Garland over his appointment of Jack Smith. This is bad news for Jack Smith. I think uh, Clarence Thomas has telegraphed everything. We're going to go all the way back to 30 years ago today was his Supreme Court nomination. I'm going to show you that footage, something I've never seen before. Welcome to Doug in Exile. This is where the Happy Patriots are. We're huge fans of Clarence Thomas. We are not fans of Jack Smith. Look how young you are. Thank you, Mr. President. That's him thanking George Herbert Walker Bush, G.H.W. Bush. Here's 30 years ago today, President Bush nominated Clarence Thomas to the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Thomas is an American hero and our greatest justice, as he said 30 years ago today, quote, only in America. You're going to see his humility here. Clarence Thomas cries in this video clip. Watch Thomas's beautiful and heartfelt remarks on July 1st, 1991. As a child, I could not dare dream that I would ever see the Supreme Court, not to mention be nominated to it. Indeed, my most vivid childhood memory of the Supreme Court were the, or was the impeach Earl Warren signs which lined Highway 17 near Savannah. I didn't quite understand who this Earl Warren fellow was, but I knew he was some, in some kind of trouble. That's Clarence Thomas remembering his childhood. If any of you ever want to read a book, read it. My Grandfather's Son by Clarence Thomas. He reads the audio book. It's amazing. He goes into his childhood. This guy came from dirt, no money, freezing to death. He was even an oyster farmer. He would walk out in the mud and try and get oysters just for pennies. He was in, from absolute poverty, absolute zero education. We had people who cared for him. And that's what made the difference. And I think it is amazing. The thing I love about hearing stories like that is that he just embodies the American dream. That's what America is all about. America is not about giving people handouts. You might come from a millionaire family or you might come dirt poor, but everybody has that same chance to make it. This man is the living embodiment of that. There's a legal missile at A.G. Merrick Garland What's he talking about here? We're going to read from the actual Supreme Court document. It is difficult to see how the special counsel has an office, quote, established by law as required by the Constitution when the attorney general appointed the special counsel, Jack Smith. He did not identify any statute that clearly creates such an office. See, this goes back to the fourth branch of government that gets removed with Chevron. See Department of Justice order, nor did he rely on a state statute granting him the authority to appoint officers as he deems fit, as the heads of some other agencies have. Instead, the Attorney General Merrick Garland relied upon several statutes of a general nature. Okay, now we're going to go, I'm going to go into that footnote real quick, just because it's interesting to me. To be sure, a few presidents have appointed special prosecutors without uh, pointing to any Express statutory authorization, see generally T. Eastland, ethics, politics, and independent counsel. Um, but this court has no occasion to review the constitutionality of those prosecutors' authority. In fact, Congress gave the attorney general the power to appoint additional officers as he deems necessary, but only for the Bureau of Prisons. As Milt Friedman used to say, ignore everything before the but. Okay, let's go. But special counsels only for the Bureau of Prisons. Back to Clarence Thomas 30 years ago. I thank all of those who have helped me along the way and who've helped me to this point and, and this moment in my life, especially my grandparents who are. That's a real man right Especially there. my grandparents, my mother, and the nuns, all of whom were adamant that I grow up to make something of myself. I'm choking up. I'm choking up. Notice he did not mention on that list of people his dad. 
His dad was, he, by the way, he mentions that in his book. You got to read the book. I'm not going to spoil it for you. My grandfather's son. That's why he thanked his grandfather. If Clarence Thomas lived through today's age, who knows if he would have ever made it to the Supreme Court. Everybody would be telling him, ah, it's all right, it's all right. He had every right in the world to sit back and say, you know what, life dealt me a bad hand. But he decided you could either make excuses or you could make opportunities. And he decided, you know what, forget these excuses. That's only going to motivate me to work even harder. And I respect the heck out of this. As if he was his dad, okay. None of the statutes cited by the Attorney General appear to create an office for the special counsel, and especially not with the clarity typical of past statutes used for that purpose. The president is further authorized to direct to appoint special counsel who have charge and control of the prosecution of such litigation. Section 509 and 510 are generic provisions concerning the functions of the attorney general and his ability to delegate authority to, quote, any other officer, employee, or agency. Basically, a job's too big for Merrick Garland, so he's allowed to appoint sections of it to someone else. It contemplates an attorney specially appointed by the attorney general under law, emphasized, thereby suggesting that such an attorney's office must have already been created by some other law, emphasis added. As for 533, it provides that the attorney general may appoint officials to detect and prosecute crimes against the United States, emphasis added. It is unclear whether an official is, equi is equivalent to an officer as used by the Constitution, uh, uh, considering the meaning of officer regarding this provision would be a curious place for Congress to hide the creation of an office for special counsel. It's placed in a chapter concerning the Federal Bureau of in Investigation not the separate chapters concerning U.S. attorneys or the now lapsed independent counsel. To be sure, the court gave a uh, passing reference to the cited statutes as supporting the appointment of the special prosecutor, Jack Smith, in United States versus Nixon. I'm sorry, not Jack Smith, but the one that went after Nixon back in 1974. But it provides no analysis of the provision's text. Perhaps there's an answer for why these statutes create an office for the special counsel. We'll start with that but in a second. I also thank my wonderful wife and my wonderful son. In my view, only in America can this could this have been possible. Only in America, what a great patriot. I also think it's funny that he brings up Jenny. You know, he drives a Winnebago, uh, a motorhome around the US and goes and parks in camping areas where people don't recognize him. They don't know who he is, and he loves being with the people. In one case, he met a racist who went up to him and just assumed because he was black, he was driving for someone else, and they said, who are you driving for? And he said, oh, Miss Ginny. He's <laughs> talking about his wife. I love it. Uh, prosecution proceeds. We should at least provide a, fu a fulsome explanation of why that is so, even if the special counsel has a valid office. Questions remain as to whether the attorney general filled that office in compliance with the appointments clause. For example, it must be determined whether the special counsel, uh, Jack Smith, is a principal or inferior officer. If the former, his appointment is invalid because the special counsel has not nominated by presidential and confirmed by the Senate. So he's not, if so he's a lesser officer, meaning he cannot prosecute as principal uh, officers must be. Even if he's an inferior officer, the attorney general could appoint him without presidential nomination and senatorial confirmation only if, quote, Congress by law vests the appointment in the attorney general as a head of department. So the special counsel's appointment is invalid unless a statute created the special counsel's office and gave the attorney general the power to fill it, quote, by law, unquote. This allows the Congress to stay in control of these special prosecutors. Whether the special counsel's office was established by law is not trifling, technically. If Congress has not reached a consensus that a particular office should exist, the executive lacks the power to unilaterally create and then fill that office like they did with Jack Smith. Given that the special counsel purports to wield the executive branch's power to prosecute and consequences are weighty, our Constitution separation of powers, including the separation of the powers to create and fill offices, is, quote, the 
absolutely central guarantee of a just government, unquote, and the liberty that it sources for us all. That's just the thing. We cannot grant the executive branch too much power, and it will just negate the powers of the legislative and the judicial branch. By having Congress oversee it, I believe that is how the Founding Fathers intended. Because we cannot just have the president appoint a special counsel, and then this guy can just roam free, do whatever the heck he wants. There needs to be checks and balances. That's the way America works. That's what the Founding Fathers intended when they crafted the Constitution. And they were geniuses for crafting that. They learned from the Romans, the Greeks, John Locke. They learned all those great things from history and then crafted it into one document. And that's the Constitution of the United States. There needs to be some degree of oversight to this man. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below. And also, who is your favorite Supreme Court justice? Mine personally is Clarence Thomas because I just relate to this man. I think he's a very inspirational man. Uh, but yeah, let me know your favorite down below. I'd love to hear that. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash a like, comment, subscribe. And wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.